They call me the Absorbing Man. Welcome to another exciting episode from Marvelous Videos. I'm your host, Tia Ayer, Absorbing Man Origin Explored. For someone who has the ability to take the form of any material that he wants, and all he has to do is just touch it, one thing's for sure, he cannot be taken lightly. We are specifically talking about Carl, Crusher Creel, aka Absorbing Man, who happens to be a creation of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. His character gets even more interesting when one learns about the origins of his powers. For those who are not aware, and we doubt if there are any, they were given to him by the Asgardian god of mischief Loki, with the sole purpose of defeating his brother Thor. <laughs> Having first made an appearance in the Silver Age of comic books, the 114th issue of Journey into Mystery in 1965 to be more precise. The character of Absorbing Man has been on display for a very long time in the Marvel continuity. Gear up for today's video, which will be an interesting exploration of Absorbing Man, a detailed analysis of his first comic book appearance, his early life, his television origin, his fight with the Hulk, and many more. You better be ready for this! Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you! Let's begin. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Absorbing Man First Comic Book Appearance and Origins Explored Comic Origin The issue begins with the Asgardian God of Thunder pursuing an adversary who is attempting to escape from him in a souped-up bucket racing car. With Thor pulling him from the car and hurling him to the ground, the enemy is seen shooting at him with a high-powered blaster. Thor dodges the attack and throws his avenging hammer that hits an enormous stone and causes his foe to fall down. His rival is clearly not the one to give up, and he is seen reloading his weapon. He also has plans of using a grenade on Thor later. Oblivious to the duo, Loki has been keeping a track of their fight, watching them on a strange, four-dimensional molecular screen in Asgard and devising a rather wicked plan for a his brother. He concocts a magical potion and teleports it to Earth. Just a drop of the unearthly creation is enough to weaken Thor and give his enemy an advantage over him. But to Loki's utter horror and disappointment, his whole plan goes wrong. When Thor is both successful in squashing the effects of the grenade thrown at him, as well as putting his enemy out of action. Let me show you why they call me the Absorbing Man. Back in Asgard, Loki can hardly come to terms with the fact that a potion as powerful as his failed to have its effects on Thor. Needless to say, he is furious and ends up making another magical mixture. Next, he scans for a suitable candidate to do his job and teleports the serum inside a drink of an inmate serving sentence. Crusher Creel is seen gulping down his drink unaware that Loki has laced it with a potion that will make him the most powerful mortal on Earth. One easily capable of destroying Thor, Creel soon becomes impatient enough to cause major chaos in the prison cafeteria. The guards try to calm him down, but he is not the one to listen. This forces them to shoot at him, but to their utter shock, the bullets have no effect on him, and Creel's body is seen transforming into steel. Wielding his weighted ball and chain, to which he was tied before like a deadly mallet, Creel escapes prison. The next scene has Dr. Donald Blake treating an injured reporter called Harris Hobbs, who tells him that he is pursuing an escaped convict with superpowers, one who is apparently hiding in the Black Mountain Swamp area. Of course, this catches the doctor's attention, and he ends up postponing his dinner with Jane Foster to probe deeper into things. Blake transforms himself into Thor and reaches a forementioned destination, only to find Crusher Creel there. <laughs> As they engage themselves in a battle, Thor realizes that Creel is as powerful as he is. In fact, with each blow, Creel is seen to absorb Thor's strength even more. With the Thunder God creating a whirlwind, in the hopes of hurling Creel's weapon from him, the latter ends up mimicking the former's feet. By now, Reporter Hobbs has also reached the scene, and he attempts to help out Thor by throwing dynamite sticks at Creel. However, Creel is fast enough to knock the dynamite out of Hobbs' hands, light it, and then throw it back at Hobbs. Thank God for Thor! who 
who was swift enough to save Hobbs before the dynamite exploded. Thor leaves, but not before telling the reporter to return back to the city and warn the authorities about Creel, who by then had escaped again and this time stealing a car. Post filling gas at the station, Creel destroys the place by swinging his iron ball and chain. He clearly seems to be enjoying his new powers and even addresses himself as the most dangerous guy in the world, stating himself as the absorbing man. Creel starts daydreaming about all the things that he is capable of doing, right from breaking into a bank, taking over a country, to even becoming a dictator. His thoughts are running wild. Nonetheless, Thor tracks him down and what follows is one of the most spectacular battles in recorded history. The battle goes on for hours and neither of them seems to be exhausted or even shows the slightest sign of slowing down. They are engaged in a hand-to-hand -hand combat with each other when a mystic intradimensional mist starts surrounding them. Balder appears before Thor and brings him to the Rainbow Bridge, where he informs him that Loki has captured Jane. It takes Thor only a split second to join the dots and realize that it has been Loki all this while who has been posing as the real threat and he goes after Loki along with Baldur. As for Creel, he believes that he has finally beaten Thor and revels in glory. He's always right. Absorbing Man in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Creel was raised in the Bronx, one of the five boroughs of New York City. Post his mother's death, his father became quite abusive towards him and Creel. Eventually, he stood up for himself at the age of 16. That got him kicked out of home and he ended up on the streets. Living on the streets made him inclined towards a life of crime and he would more often be found breaking into houses or stealing cars. But it was his time spent at the gym that he learned about having a particular skill for boxing. He earned the title Crusher due to his aggressiveness with a very very short duration, and it goes without saying that he can, and has become quite celebrated. A few years later, he was subject to an experiment by Baron Strucker, one of the leaders of the authoritarian, subversive terrorist organization Hydra for Project Destroyer of Worlds. Post the experiment, Creel had the power to absorb literally any element for that matter and have his skin altered into that very element. He continued boxing and beneath his boxing gloves were usually a pair of steel fists. Very soon, S.H.I.E.L.D. got to know of Creel, especially his powers, and sent after John Garrett to eliminate the Index candidate. But unbeknownst to S.H.I.E.L.D., Garrett was an undercover agent for Hydra and no points for guessing that he ended up faking the death of Creel and had him enlisted in Hydra using the Faustus method. Creel started working for Daniel Whitehall as his assassin, following his orders as well as Sunil Bakshi, one who happened to be the right-hand man of Whitehall. While carrying out one of Whitehall's tasks, Creel intervened in an undercover operation that had a team of mercenaries trying to lay their hands on some important information from a former agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., Roger Browning. With Creel snapping the neck of Browning, the mercenary team started shooting at him, but the former was impervious to the bullets and he fled from the scene by leaping from a window. Why Creel hasn't made the exchange yet? Can we get a laser mic on him? Sky, you copy? Post coming back to his hideaway, he updated Bakshi and was rewarded with an exceedingly uncommon diamond called Musgravite. Creel absorbed the mineral and reveled in the feeling that his power gave him. As part of his next task, he was asked to capture Brigadier General Glenn Talbot with the sole purpose of locating the Oblesque. However, the intervention of S.H.I.E.L.D. operative Melinda May had Creel arrested and taken into military custody and locked inside the government storage warehouse. Unbeknownst to everyone, Creel's arrest was just part of Hydra and Whitehall's actual plan to acquire the Obelisk, which was also being kept at the very same warehouse. Creel, who was being kept locked inside a glass cell, started planning his next move. It was a piece of cake for him to escape from the cell. All he had to do was touch the glass and he turned into one, easily fooling the guards. Next, he turned himself into the concrete wall, but met opposition from S.H.I.E.L.D. Agent Isabel Hartley, who had not only retrieved the obelisk, but by then had also figured out Creel was there. A brief battle ensued between the duo and it ended with Hartley touching the obelisk, which further resulted in her getting overwhelmed by it. The pain was excruciating and while her team tried the best to save her and take her to a nearby hospital, Creel, who had already escaped the facility by then, caused an accident leading to her ultimate death. Creel walked into the site of the accident and figured out a way to lay his hands on the obelisk.
Being a witness to the adverse effects of the obelisk, he altered his hand into rubber first and then grabbed the obelisk and started walking away. But in spite of doing everything so as not to let his skin come in contact with it, Creel still got affected by the overpowering effect of the obelisk. In a desperate attempt to hand over the item to Whitehall, he stole a van and headed straight to the halfway house cafe, oblivious that Melinda was following him from behind. In order to know who he worked for, Creel, while waiting for Bakshi, inadvertently touched a waitress resulting in her body transforming into stone. Horrified, he fled from there and went back to his hideout. After having exhausted himself trying to remove the dark effects of the obelisk, he contacted Bakshi for his assistance. With him finally meeting Bakshi, the latter helped him overcome the strong effects of the obelisk by having him submit to his mind control. Just when he was about to hand over the item to Bakshi, they were interrupted by Lance Hunter, who had come to avenge the death of Hartley and his friend Idaho. Hunter didn't really stand a chance against Creel, and was just about to get killed when the former director of S.H.I.E.L.D., Phil Coulson, appeared and stabbed Creel from behind using the Esbitimate, one that happened to be a modified overkill device. This transformed Creel's entire body into stone. Coulson placed him inside a cryostasis chamber and later delivered him to Glenn Talbot. You've gone soft. Absorbing Man vs. The Hulk Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes 7th Micro episode titled Hulk vs. The World conclusively had on display one of the most epic battles taking place. Bruce Banner is seen putting his own cover at risk and locating Creel at a diner. Calling himself an expert and a friend, he offers to help Creel with his problem and tells him about the wicked activities of S.H.I.E.L.D. However, Creel is way more interested in Banner, as he was able to figure out who he was the minute that he entered the diner. His powers are a result of exposure to gamma radiation, so with him kicking Bruce out of the diner, no points for guessing that the latter transforms into Hulk. This marks the beginning of their epic battle, one that has the duo punching each other literally midway in the air and on the ground as well. Give it a few seconds and Hulk is seen smacking Creel with a Las Vegas, Nevada metal signboard. The fight gets even more exciting when Creel touches the signboard and absorbs the property of the metal, eventually transforming into one. There's no denying that he is tough and proves himself to be quite a competent foe. There comes a time when Creel, as Absorbing Man, morphs his hands into what looks like hammers and keeps hitting Hulk. The Green Giant, clearly having had enough, headbutts him first and then stamps his own feet with all of his strength. The Tremors send Absorbing Man flying high up and as he comes down, Hulk punches him hard against a rock. With Creel making the mistake of absorbing the rock, Hulk beats the shit out of him, breaking his arms for starters, eventually battering him to dust, leaving just his head behind. What makes him such a powerful character? Well, anything he touches or whatever touches him, he has the power to absorb the properties of that element and eventually transform himself into the same thing. Mind you, it can be an animate and inanimate, as well as certain forms of other energy. So far, we have seen him alter to steel, stone, wood, and even glass for that matter. His other transformations include water, fire, snow, as well as energy states like cosmic, nuclear, thermal, and even light. In case you are wondering if absorbing man here can absorb particular properties of the object that he touches, you are in the right direction. He is very much capable of assuming the height of a high rise or let's say the spikes of a mace from mimicking the properties of Thor's Mjolnir to matching the Thunder God's strength by strength. He is certainly not the one to be taken lightly. Now, speaking of the second issue of Gamma Fight, his character showed how his absorbing traits aren't just limited to metal. Trust us on this. He is seen grabbing a trance locator device and absorbing all of its powers to save his teammates. Well, from metal to machine, absorbing man has indeed come a long way. Thanks for the power up, you stupid cave man. Where else has he appeared? There's the Thor segment of the 1966 animated series The Marvel Superheroes 
followed by an appearance in the episode titled They Call Me Mr. Fix-It of the Incredible Hulk animated television series. Voiced by Olive Becker, the character has appeared in the Avengers United They Stand animated series in the episode titled Command Decision. Then there's Marvel's Daredevil, where his character is mentioned in a flashback in the episode Cut Man. Voiced by Jonathan Adams, he has appeared in Hulk and the Agents of Smash. Avengers Assemble and Ultimate Spider-Man. To hold your hand? What kind of Hulk are you? <laughs> Speaking of video games, his character appears in 1994, The Incredible Hulk video game. This is followed by him appearing as a boss in the PSP, PS2, and the Wii versions of Marvel, Ultimate Alliance 2, where he is voiced by David Hope. Then there's the 2013 LEGO-themed action-adventure video game, LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, where his character appears voiced by John DiMaggio. Lastly, we have Marvel Avengers Alliance, Marvel Future Fight, and LEGO Marvel's Adventures. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone. They went out! Get them out!